Hello, dear friends, my lovely audiences, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the East West Show. Jack Charles, my name. East West is a show with a G and E TV. Every now and then, when we're not busy, when the country is not busy, we will find a moment to bring information that we believe is necessary for you to learn. And of course, this information is never new. It is about pollution. As you can see, the title of today's show is already there, Pollution, comma, The Silent Killer. It is a silent killer there, and the killer is getting bigger and bigger. I'm very glad my friend Chris Neby, uh, as a director of Hollywood, as a uh, fighter for justice, also pays attention to the environmental issues. And that we find another common ground and we're once again on the same page. For that, you're welcome, sir, to the show. Chao Chan Hao Lao Ponyo. Chao Chan Hao. Very good. It may be good morning, good day, good afternoon, depending where you are, but here in Los Angeles is the morning. Anyway, right? So, uh, pollution is a old, 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 old subject. And I believe that when I was a little kid, there was all, already a talk about uh, pollution. I was, uh, th well, third or fourth degree. The schools already talk about the pollution. And it's never been a topic like today that we talk in such an enhanced way, such a way, such a way in depth. So I'm glad that my friend Chris Neby founder and the CEO as the director of Monorex Cooperation of Hollywood and also the uh, uh, fighter for justice were together talking about it. Right. Now, uh, speaking of pollution, you have all aspects, right? And you have uh, air, water, so on and so forth, right? Where do you want to start? I so want to start what is the most serious pollution now? I want to start with the recently United Nations study which was released about pollution that is not only shocking, but it's utterly horrifying. It's horrifying. It should be a wake-up call for everyone. Mm -hmm. Let me address the causes of pollution one by one. Mm -hmm. The first one is atmospheric pollution. Mm -hmm. The garbage we dump in our atmosphere includes the waste of products of, from burning fossil fuels mm -hmm. and farming of animals. You may be surprised what farming of animals has to farming do. Farming of animals? I don't get it. Yes, because you see, the cows, our lust for meat is mm -hmm. causing more and more cattle to be raised and the cattle fart. All right. And it's an enormous amount of uh, carbon dioxide, <laughs> methane, uh -huh. and nitrous oxidate, oxidite generated by motor vehicles also, burning coal and oil and gas, which we use for generate electricity. That part I understand. And gases emitted by animals, especially cattle. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway. <laughs> Okay, huh. now, uh, it is easily understood. You're talking about burning coal, yes. burning oil, yeah. uh, burning what's whatsoever. And that produces carbon dioxide, and monoxide, whatever, right. into the air that pollutes our atmosphere. But nobody that is would, understood. Yeah. Nobody has ever heard, for me the first time, the gas. Yeah, but right? it's a fact. The gas yeah. at the end of a digest system of a cow or something yes. Yes. released to air yes. would cause a word or attention yes. that is, uh, well, categorized as a pollution. Yeah, and so because we did, have... Did the UN investigation say that? <laughs> yes. Did yes. it say that? Yes. How do you quantify it? Oh, that has been around for a long time. I knew about that for a long time, but it sounds so funny that that people don't realize it, but our lust for meat increases, increases the no, breeding no. of cattle. All right, anyway, that could be not in big quantity, am I right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you see the rainforest and the wetlands are the lungs of the earth. 
Mm -hmm. Their continued destruction, just uh, think about the Amazon forest, mm -hmm. also contribute to atmospheric pollution. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. There is another ahead. thing, uh -huh. airline fuel. Mm -hmm. Airline fuel pollutions from both civil and military aircraft have a huge impact on the atmosphere. Yeah, that as, is understood. As airline pollution, uh, vehicle pollution, uh, the, emo uh, the emission, right? Yeah, but and uh, burning coal, burning oil, like we said already, petroleum uh, fuel, right? Okay, now, it is exactly interesting or funny for me to hear about that kind of gas made by animals. Yeah. Do we, do we human do that too? Yes, but not to that extent. Not to that extent. I mean, you know, uh, uh -huh. we, don't, we don't fart that much. <laughs> Anyhow, oh, especially right. the uh -huh. high carcinogenic B centipede causes various cancers. A typical, and now comes something which you would be shocked. Uh -huh. A typical commercial airport, like for mm. example Los Angeles, All right. spews out daily mm. hundreds of tons of highly toxic pollution pollutants mm -hmm. into the atmosphere and they are affecting a radius of 25 miles around it mm -hmm. hundreds of tons yeah. another atmospheric pollution is a particulate aerosol emitted into the atmosphere by progressive wear and tear of automobile parts especially synthetic rubber tires they not only pollute the atmosphere, but also accumulate... What do they do these days with the used tires? It's not the used tires. Mm -hmm. It's the tire which goes, runs... Oh, friction. Accumulates temporarily on the road, mm -hmm. and then is washed... The, 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 the powder is washed away by rain into the waterways. Mm -hmm. Another pollution problem are environmental modification techniques mm. involving geoengineering. Mm. Particulates being secretly dumped into the atmosphere by the US military and other militaries around the world. Geoengineering is being used for weather modification and environmental warfare techniques. You know, weather mo you can to a certain degree regulate the weather with geoengineering. It's done, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Global warming is another effect. We talk so much about global warming, but that's actually much of lesser concern. Global warming is the consequence of air pollution. Right. Right. It, it is not a pollution itself. No, but global uh, warming has triggered a massive release of carbon dioxide and methane, which is stored in permafrost regions and ice shelf sediments. You mean the warming itself, yes. the higher, relatively higher temperature, makes, makes the Arctic a melt. more release yes. of pollution. Yes, because it's of pollutants. Pollutants, because the methane, methane is, <laughs> I'm not a scientologist, yeah, scientologist, so uh -huh. a scientist person mm. so these mm. words are difficult because the methane is stored in in the in the permafrost region so if the ice melts mm. the methane is released 250 mi million 250 million years ago mm. 90 percent of all species on earth mm. were annihilated by toxic arctic methane hydrate release a recent Russian... That's 250 million years ago. Yeah. I wasn't born then. No. But a recent Russian study identified about 7,000 mm -hmm. underground methane bubbles mm -hmm. poised to explode in the Arctic regions of the world mm -hmm. any day soon. Mm -hmm. You mean another uh, burn or explosion? No, no, but melting, melting causes the bubbles to ex, uh, to uh, rise, escape. To rise, to rise, to yeah. rise, and right, to bubble right, into, right, into right, the right, air. Right, right, huh. mm -hmm. All right. Ocean garbage. Big. No, no, no. I mean, let's, let's take care of these. 
e among this, uh, the first group, though, yeah. what do you think is major? We want to, we want to talk about the major. Uh, they are all equally, they are all equally important. Mm -hmm. I think we have to go through here because at the end we can talk okay, about... Okay, what, what about ocean pollution? Ocean pollution is, you know, there is... <laughs> ocean pollution is threatening right now to annihilate 800 ocean species. 800. The problem is huge. It is virtually impossible to clean up the mess. Plastic chokes the sea. Ocean currents have created a plastic patch mm -hmm. in the Pacific Ocean that is bigger than the whole nation of Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's all plastic. Yeah. Last time I heard the the island the the I mean the plastic bottle plastic yes, waste yes. create or formed larger than New York State. Yeah, now it's as large as Mexico. Now you're talking about as big as the uh, Mexico land of Mexico. Yes, that is too big. Yeah, to me. Yeah, and speaking of that, the other day I read on the news though probably there is a hope there. Okay, there is a one scientist who found out or discovered that. There is a certain bug that eats the plastic and uh, trans it into carbon. Right. Huh, you see? Uh, yeah. And, carbon uh, monoxide. Yeah, carbon monoxide or dioxide whatsoever. Yeah, whatever. And uh, whatsoever. And uh, what he found out was that the certain bug that goes into his rice bag, which is plastic at home, makes some holes and eat the rice, uh -huh. right? And then that gives him a trigger of thinking, say, hey, where did the plastic go, right? And then he dissect the, the bug and found out that the plastic in the stomach being processed into carbon as gas. Right, interesting. Now, See? he tried to reproduce the agent, the chemical agent that the stomach of the bug Produces, yeah. try to commercialize it uh -huh. to make the kind of a solution right. that can a digest, can filter. dissolve, yeah. dissolve plastic. That probably is a hope huh. somewhere, somehow Maybe, yeah. you down see. the road. Then you see the runoff because the ocean, you know, is 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 like a sewer because the runoff of agricultural pesticide poisons, mm -hmm. fossil fuels, pharmaceuticals and other ways discharge into the ocean impact the marine life. I mean fish, you know, you eat fish and you think it's healthy, it's no longer healthy. They're in the all long toxic. run, in the long run, everything that is dumped into the soil goes to the ocean anyway. Right. Right. That's the only back, back end of anything bad right. to the soil. Yeah. All right. Okay, now let's take a short moment out. Uh, we come back, we'll continue. There are quite a few that we line up as pollution or pollutants or resources of, I mean, source of pollution. Uh, with me, my good friend, Chris Nibby, uh, director of Hollywood and also fighter for justice. Now we're talking about this time, the silent killer being pollution. So stay with us, please. <laughs> Hello, dear friends, my lovely audiences. Welcome back to the show, Jack Chow on the East West with the Gene ETV. Today, we're not talking about politics. We're not, in, not talking about economy. We're not talking about gun control. We're talking about a silent killer that is the pollution on this global earth. Uh, it is very quite noticeable that it is so noticeable, noticeable that the United Nations has recently done a survey about the, the level, how we polluted ourselves. Right. There are air pollution, which is the atomphoric pollution, atomsophoric pollution, and also the ocean pollution. With me today, tackling the point one by one, is my friend Chris Nibby, director of uh, Hollywood, a founder and CEO of Monorex Hollywood, which has a production, a big monument, 
of uh, a 19, I will say 19, 19 yeah. films. Last here. one is Tibetan right. medicine. Right. Yeah. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Uh, he is here talking about uh, pollution. So to the ocean pollution, except the land itself that we produce, the plastic bottle, plastic anything, right? Plastic bags, anything, and also the oil, the soil uh, that that contaminated the soil, mm -hmm. and or the pesticides. What else do we have? that pollutes the ocean. You see, you have um, pharmaceutical waste uh -huh. uh, and other wastes which are in sh discharged into the ocean. They create such a te toxic death zone, death zones in the ocean, which have too little oxygen to support any kind of marine life. You have heard about um, acidification of, that is killing coral reefs and the species that uh, depend on these reefs. You've mm -hmm. heard the great uh, reef in Australia is in severe danger. So, and then last but not least, you have Fukuyama, Fukushima. Uh, Fukushima, about Fukushima, the uh, nuclear pollution. Since yeah. 2011. Radiation, yes. Mm -hmm. Since 2011, Fukushima, mm -hmm. nuclear reactor disaster, vast quantities of radioactive materials mm. are ongoing being discharged into the Pacific Ocean, creating a worldwide radiation contamination. And there is nothing which can be done. The sea water, of course, pollution is one thing, but the sea product, right, ocean product, which is fish that we eat, mm -hmm. That is the problem. Yeah. yeah. I've heard something which is, uh, I don't know, is it from, uh, is it official or not? People are starting to worry about uh, sushis. Yes. Sashimi or yes. stuff like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Do you think that's a legit worry or what? Yes, it's a legitimate worry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think uh, that uh, a lot of fish is more and more contaminated. We are contaminated. You and I, we are contaminated already. All right, all right. And there is no cure about it? No. Until we consume all the sea fish? <laughs> there is no cure. Uh -huh. For example, it's something more, more, even more dramatic. I mean, I was shocked about this study. Mm. The waterways and the groundwater contamination of the earth, wetlands, rivers, creeks, lakes and underground aquifers is deadly, is toxic. Chemi chemical poisons, heavy metals used in corporate farming, uh -huh. mining, hydraulic fracking is a kiss of death, as well as domestic waste, sewage, gasoline, oil, and, and, and chemicals from leaking storage tanks, bacteria, viruses, household cleaners, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, pesticides, herbicides, and other poisons are about to make our water supply undrinkable in the near future. Now that you mentioned it, right? Right this year, the New Year party, I met a guy from China. Mm -hmm. He was an expert of underground water. Mm -hmm. And he says, some, some of the of, uh, of the Aquifier. chemical plant, yes. chemical plant, in order to get away from the fines of a pollutant yes. or pollutant that they produce, they discharge on a daily basis. You know what they did, right? They dig wells, yes. like what they do with the with, uh, with, 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 yes. with oil mines, right, right? Right, right, right? They make holes, like say, thousand of meters and deep, put the stuff right? in there. and with the pressure gas or whatever, yes. 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 inject pollutants mm -hmm. down deep yeah. to the ground. Mm -hmm. So, and then it goes nothing, into the, nothing happened. And then it goes into the aquifers because underground yeah, we yeah. have huge lakes mm -hmm. which are very pure water, but uh, you know there is so much. Leakage and, and that, according to the people, the guy I met, mm -hmm. is irre irrevocable. Yes, it is unfixable. You see, 
drinkable permanent damage is done there forever drinkable water will become such a precious natural resource that there will be water wars who controls the water controls life yeah exactly That's the future and not only that even in the old days you uh, did you see the film Chinatown yeah yeah that was talking about water yes, right yes, talking yes. about water whoever controls water controls life yeah well that is the same thing we're going to be we'll be going back to page 1 <laughs> where yeah. we started with the Chinatown thing yeah am i right right all right, that's so dangerous. And then there's another. That's so 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 risky. Then there's another contamination: the soil. Mm. You see, uns unsustainable farming is depleting the soil of nutrition and poisoning with synthetic fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, and antibiotic at such an alarming rate that th we will be unable to sustain sustainable farming at the end of this century. The we, end of this century? Yes, mm -hmm. the end of this century. We also contaminate uh -huh. the soil with heavy metal waste from our industrial activities, as you just mentioned. Yeah, speaking of that, I have some supplement to back you up, right? Yeah. Uh, I read a study, uh, also done by UM, yes. Saying that the resources all together, the land, mm -hmm. uh, cultivatable land, mm -hmm. that means land you can grow, right. you can grow things on, mm -hmm. right? Uh, all together can support a population of uh, 9.5 billion mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Now we have 7.2. And by estimation, by the year of 2050, the total population is go over one, I mean, go over 10.5. Yeah. Not 9.5, over 10.5, there's the extra one billion people going to be out of food. That is so risky situation. But you see, you're addressing another issue, which actually is at the core of everything. I'm coming to this later. This is overpopulation. And this is also related because yes. with the land being being contaminated, you produce less food, you're going to worsen the situation rather than improving. Am I right? Yeah. And you see, it's a very sad thing. I was very much applauded, China, when they in, uh, introduced the one-child policy. Very wise mm. and very appreciated by me. Many people didn't like that and thought that was very bad. I don't you, like it either. I yeah, don't like it myself. Yeah, but you see, that was very wise. But the result is that we have now, uh, all over the world, not only in China, too many old people. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. medical research and lifestyles have um, enlarged um, the lifestyle, uh, the right, life expectancy right, yeah, yeah, yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. So, the overpopulation is, at the core of all this, is overpopulation. If you would have only 4 billion people in the world, you wouldn't have any of these problems. All right, okay. That's that the makes real some sense. problem. However, the, the problem, uh, the subject of population, it is so complicated. Yes. Right? Taking care of one hand, one hand will never help because if you, if you cut down the population to, say, 5 billion, right, instead of 7.2, now you're going to ha have a lack of uh, labor force. Yes. It, lack it, of workers. Lack of uh, people who produce. Right. All right? That's a problem all combined. Yes. Now, we're, we're, let's go back to the pollution. To pollute the limited soil is really something very risky to do before we have the population versus a food problem taken care of. Right, but you see, it's so, it's all interrelated, but in the end it comes to it, we are getting too old, we don't have enough young labor force, mm -hmm. and for example, in Germany, we are having 
many people don't have any more children or only have one mm. child because they realize it's become too expensive. So there is a certain self regulating aspect there, exactly. but it's not enough. Exactly. We are mm. already, and you see, as it is, it's always in the poor countries where you will find the most reproduction of children. Mm. Because the, 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 the developed nations, more and more or less, because anyway, it's so expensive. Yeah, that'd probably be another issue of yeah. another day. Uh, with me today is my good friend, Chris Nibby. I really admire his uh, mindset that he really cares about uh, uh, the human race with lots of problems that he dug out, dug out from uh, archives, put them into films uh, back in during the World War II period of time, such as story of uh, Unit uh, 731, mm -hmm. a Flying Tiger versus the Burma, Burma Road, on and on and on and on. Dayu Island. Dayu Island, Island, the Tibet and the truth whatsoever, yeah. right? Not only that, but also to the contemporary world talking about the pollution that we human race are facing, right? So stay with us. We'll be right back, please. <laughs> Hello, dear folks, my lovely audiences. Welcome back to the show, Jack Chow on the East West with the GNE TV. With me today is my dear friend, Mr. Chris Nibby, and fighter for justice. He loves the community. He loves the human race. That's why he keeps on producing lots of wonderful documentary films to find out, to pinpoint the human race problems, including this one. He once again tackle the problem, which is a brand new problem to lots of people, even though the subject is old, but to be tackled in a way like this is quite brand new. We put all together the pollution problem. We check with them one by one, see all together how big a problem that we human race are facing. All right, so now uh, we're back to uh, to what's the next? Soil. No, we are, we are still with soil, soil contamination, contamination yes. because mm. you see, we also contaminate the soil with heavy metals, metal wastes from our industrial activities, mm -hmm. as you mentioned before, mm -hmm. by excessive use of arsenic, mm -hmm. cadmium, mm -hmm. lead, and mercury, mm -hmm. as well as other soil mismanagement practices pioneered by Monsanto. Hmm. A corporation that is knowingly poisoning the world for profit. Everybody knows about it. There is a lot of discussion about Monsanto, but they keep going to do it because, you see, in, in, in one way, they are, uh, uh, with their pesticides and so on, they protect the vegetable, hmm. and, but in the other way, they're poisoning us while they are protecting the food source. Uh -huh. Then there is another waste form that. In other words, there is no way we no. can stop the pollution no. I mean, of we, the of the pesticide waste. Right, because you have then you have uh, the uh, the bugs, you know, eating half of the vegetable, mm. and the vegetable will not be so beautiful and fresh and good looking. Nobody is buying an apple which has some dark spots. I know. They well, all want the perfect apple. What to do? We come to this. Anti <laughs> antibiotic waste, for uh -huh. example. Uh -huh. You see, while Big Pharma is mm. doing a lot of good with research and by medic medi medicines mm. prolongating our mm. lifespan, mm. they also fail to disclose their antibiotic waste that is untreated and secretly leaked from their factories into the waterways. Mm. You just mentioned it. Goes yes. into the soil and precipitated to a point that they join with the underground water. And you mentioned that before. Thus, by doing so, they are fueling the creation of deadly superbugs, superbugs and causing a grave public health emergency. <laughs> it goes on and on. 
the genetic engineering and gene uh -huh. drives mm -hmm. is probably the most frightening pollutant we are now releasing into the environment. What does it do to pollute? I'll tell you. It goes beyond genetic mutilation, mutilation of organisms, mm -hmm. GMOs, you have heard about that, mm -hmm. which has been widely practiced, especially again by Monsanto. Mm -hmm. Genetic engineering in agriculture mm -hmm. has allowed widespread genetic contamination mm -hmm. of our food supply and the environment. When you say uh, genetic uh, contamination, are you talking about the genetic modified products? Yes, yes, yes. Gener gene uh, uh, herpicide resistant, uh, 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 you know, creating herpicide, herpicide resistant pesticide, herpicide resistant vegetables and fruits and, and apples which look See, as I said before, nobody is buying an that apple is, which uh, doesn't look perfect. That is not in the sense of uh, pollution. No. It is, uh, it is going in the other direction. It looks like a, not a pollution problem. Uh, no, it is it's pollution. A, it's a generic, generic development problem. No, uh, because it contaminates. Mm -hmm. You see, en genetic engineering in agriculture has allowed widespread gen contamination of the food supply and the environment. Gene drives can mm -hmm. entirely re-engineer an ecosystem, create fast spreading extinctions of species, and intervene in living systems at an unbelievable scale. Mm -hmm. You see, it's <laughs> you want to have a beautiful apple, so you are destroying mm -hmm. the things who give the apple spots. Mm. But by doing that, you are also uh, creating a health hazard. The fundamental relationship between humanity and nature will be changed forever mm. by mm. genetic engineering and gene drives. That is understood, however, very contradictory. Very. Uh -huh. For because on <laughs> one hand, you really want the pesticides or whatsoever, the generic revolution to give you better product, and on the other, the pollution is done. You're right. Am I right? And in a way, in a way, at least one thing for sure, that the chemicals used in the process of doing it is kind of released to the soil and get the soil contaminated. You're so right. It's a, it's a vicious circle. It's a vicious cycle. For mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. recently re -gene, uh, released gene drive files mm -hmm. reveal that the U.S. military mm -hmm. is heavily involved in uh -huh. research and development of this grotesque technology. Because it's grotesque and very dangerous. You know why? Why would the U.S. military be interested? Mm -hmm. huh. Just imagine what mm -hmm. could be done to an enemy race or enemy nation, an entire nation, with an extinction gene drive. You could create, based on this uh, gene, uh, gene uh, drives. I've never heard the term of gene drive. Yes. Is it a new term it's that a you created term. or you created? No, it's a, no, 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 it's a, it's a scientific term. Mm. I created nothing. It's all in that report. And actually, you see, you can create. Uh, <laughs> you can create. You don't have any guns anymore. You c create a gene. Which it makes a whole. When you do, you 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 put it on mm. like Germany. You contaminate Germany by air with a gene, and eventually, it will. Uh, annihilate the entire German race. Mm -hmm. That can be done. Oh, that, that that is so so dangerous. Yes. Right. Yeah. Within a matter of years. That's better. And you, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, exactly. All right. And and <laughs> it's scary. It's, it's oh, that scary is so scary. And, and That's really so scary. scary. And this is a uh -huh. fact. This is not some some propaganda or something. I'm only thinking about the. Uh, the from uh, uh, the uh, moral side, talking about social ethics, 
<laughs> and if they clone a pig or, or, or sheep or a cow whatsoever, that's the issue we're talking about. Not only I've this. never thought about in the process yeah. of doing it, the, the chemicals that contaminates the environment, oh, yeah. such as the soil. For example, you see, today I, when I came here, I was listening to a radio show about uh, self le uh, driverless cars. Okay, driverless cars, yeah. And, okay. and robots. You know, this means number one, it will be loss of jobs. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, when the, how this is going to work? I mean, technology is going on, continuous, continuous, mm -hmm. continuous. But you and I, we are basically the same, and it doesn't matter whether you are Chinese or African mm -hmm. or German or American. Our body and our system functions the same. We just may look different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another, another uh, problem of pollution is nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nano, nanoparticles, yeah. You heard about that. Yeah. They are so the small. The very teeny tiny, yeah. it's uh, uh, nanometers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is an emerging, emerging technology mm -hmm. which is already widely used in the manufacture of cosmetics, mm -hmm. pharmacologic, uh, pharmacology, pharmaceutical, yeah, yeah. pharmaceutical products, scratch-proof eyeglasses, uh, crack resistant paint, anti graffiti coatings on for walls, transparent sunscreens, stain repellent fabrics, mm. self cleaning windows, uh -huh. and ceramic coatings for solar cells. You know, in one way, yeah, ceramic ceramic coating is all. Yeah, you see, in one it, way, it is one, yes, we I are know. promoting solar cells. But in doing so, we need we using nanoparticles, and they are dangerous for the environment because it gets into your lung. Yeah, because right? the nano waste mm -hmm. is difficult to contain and monitor due to its extremely small size. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's always it's a, such a vicious circle. It can because the, uh, the the particles are so small. Right. There is no way you can screen them. Right. Am I right? Right. It can easily spread into water systems mm -hmm. or become airborne, causing great harm to human health and the environment. <laughs> it's shocking. If you read this report, which is very long, this is only the essentials. Uh -huh. It's shocking. And last, then is space junk. You see, not to contend to dump our garbage. Okay. Our All right. Let's take a junk. little moment out. Today with my good friend, Chris Neby, we're touching base with you about our pollution. Pollution on a global earth, which is often talked about, but getting continuously neglected because people just keep on doing their own production while contaminating the environment that they live in. And by doing this in a worsening cycle, mm -hmm. we don't know where we're going. Am I right? right. Okay. With me today, my good friend, Chris Nibby, sharing his uh, thought and his study about pollution. We all want to do something, and uh, I would say that we'll do something before anything becomes too late. So stay with us. We'll be back right after this little break. Hello, my dear friends, my lovely audiences. Welcome back to the discussion about pollution. Pollution is a big word. It's been there for almost a century long uh, that we're talking about, but uh, its consequences never get this big. When we started looking at them, when we started doing the analysis, we get scared, right? And uh, with me today is my good friend, Mr. Chris Nibby and fighter, I call him a fighter for justice, who not only do, does films to bring people to uh, people's awareness about uh, human race, but also does researches uh, to warn people that we are in the world that is fully, is being at least, being fully contaminated, we call pollution. 
and uh, welcome back to the show, sir. What else pollution do you see that we human race suffer? Space junk. You see, Space junk. not only are we content to dump our garbage mm -hmm. on or under the earth or in the oceans, mm -hmm. we also dump our junk into space as well. Mm -hmm. Because getting a spacecraft into space requires huge amounts of energy adding to the pollution of the atmosphere. Discarded rocket propulsion sections, you know, rockets have sections which they let yeah, go, yeah, 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 yeah. fall either back onto Earth, but many end up orbiting uh -huh. space. And uh, obsolete satellite cell. That's it. Broken parts of satellite cell. That's it. Mm -hmm. And with the space junk now a significant problem, mm -hmm. the impact of junk on satellites is regularly causing damage mm -hmm. and generating even more junk. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. You're you see? Right. So <laughs> then there's another thing, military waste. The carnage and waste produced by preparation ah. and the conduct of war is so vast that it defies the description and calculation. The diesel in, I mean, the diesel oil, no. right? No, the U.S. military is the largest polluter with hundreds of bases gravely con contaminated. I know. The and most agent, the most pollutant yeah. are the oils Right. they burn. Am I right? Not only this, also the ammunition. The ammunition? Oh. What, what contaminates? The bombs, uh, the bombs that, that all stays there. All this stuff. Except the nuclear bombs. We're talking about no, uh, traditional bomb. bombs. Everything. There, I mean, Everything. traditional bombs or traditional Powder cartridges. Bullets. Yeah. They, and what, they, they contaminate and war-ravaged regions like the Middle East. Deadly poison forever with depleted uranium and radioactive contamination. Radioactivity that I has know nothing to do with nuclear. About. Uh -huh. You also have radioactivity in ammunition, mm. in bombs. It's a different kind of, but it's also radioactive. Of course, the military, the U.S. military is not alone. All military powers around the world contribute their share to this ongoing tragedy. Only America is the most active war Yeah, sure. It is the right thing to do that not only the United States. Yeah. We want to make it a call to the international community that those military actions really make lots of uh, pollution. Yes. And to, um, to the environment. That what this UN, UN re, uh, survey and report actually yeah. does. And that includes, excludes the fact that you, you have a nuclear bomb, nuclear test. We are getting to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. explode but, here and yeah. there and stuff. But you see, nuclear waste, you know, a nuclear bomb is the ultimate of nuclear waste. Mm. We don't have that but partially released, uh, partly related to the military violence, but also byproduct of using nuclear power, because mm -hmm. we use nuclear mm -hmm. power to generate vast amounts of electricity. But at the same time, we are generating vast amounts of radioactive waste from the exploitation, uh -huh. Uh -huh. From the exploitation of the nuclear nuclear fuel cycle mm. and we bury it and we are trying to but it you know nuclear waste is not it, it stays it you cannot get rid of it so you yeah we know that we know that we know, you know that, that. Yeah, yeah. so you put it, it takes in, about two hundred thousand years yeah yeah, yeah. To, right. to, 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 to die away yeah, yeah. Mm. you see and last but not least mm. our bodies our bodies you, your body and my bodies are discharged contaminated waste due to consumption of processed... You mean now or...? Yes, or right now. You mean now or until I, bear, I get myself buried? No, 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 no. La, we, when you go to the bathroom... I would never heard about that. Yes. Those, you, are, those are fertilizers. You no, can, no, no, can, no. Because we are, con, we are con, um, uh, consuming mm -hmm. processed and nutritionally depleted food mm -hmm. and pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. Just think of the death and near extinct extinction of the honeybees. 
Oh, you yes, know. honeybees, yes. You have heard mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, yeah. You see... You're talking about uh, the pollinization, yes. right? Yes, and that is... When they start pollinization, lots of crops, they relied upon the honeybees. Yes, all of them. And now, ah. now the whole honeybees, that's why when you buy real honey at, at the grocery store, it's very expensive. Mm. Because synthetic fertilizer, herbicides, and pesticides have contaminated their food source, which are in many ways the same as ours because they're polluting our food sources. Mm -hmm. And apart from poisoned, mm -hmm. processed, and unhealthy prepared food, we also inject our bodies with contaminated vaccines, consume medi medically described antibiotic, antibiotics and drugs, and among other health issues, creating, for example, the opio opioid pandemic. Right. This is all. I believe that's enough. With it, we covered all kinds of pollution. It's all I'm, related. I'm, I'm, I'm always, always You're shocked. Uh, you see, and I'm already as, uh, well feel feel bad about it. You should be because mm. as we waste away our lives, the scientific race for technologic, techno, technological, 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 technolo mm. technological, technological yes. advancement, right. mm. advancement continues and the junk continues to pile up around us. It's Is normal. there it's anything we want to do reverse it? No. Yes, there's one chance. And mm -hmm. good question. What chance does mankind have to survive? Yeah, yeah of course, if we want to do, the want only to do thing, something to the save ourselves. The only thing ourselves. I can uh, think of is, do you remember Mahatma Gandhi? Oh, yeah, by, uh, okay. from India, right? He was not just a great advocate of nonviolence, but he also showed us that possessions and <laughs> consumptions yeah. are not the measure uh -huh. of our value uh -huh. to ourselves or anyone else. I know. Upon his death, his only... Now that, if the conclusion is that we can do nothing about it, what will Gandhi be good for? Upon his death, his only personal possessions were some clothing, some books, and his spectacles. Mm -hmm. However, his spiritual legacy lives on forever. I know, I know, I know. You see, I don't think he has anything to do with the pollution, right? No, but uh, you see, anyway. consumption. Mm -hmm. But it's very difficult, because we cannot stop technology. We continue to consume. We continue to have babies. Mm -hmm. it, unless we say, uh, one child policy for everybody. No, 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 no. That's proven not working. Okay. That's proven so not working. So we mm -hmm. are in a vicious cycle of self-destruction and basically we can do nothing it about it. It is always, no, it is always significant to make it something hopeful so that you want to make it a call to people. This is what we're going to do. This is what we want to prevent. If all comes to a conclusion that we can do nothing about it, so we're, we're talking about where are we leading as this discussion. Uh, you know, a lot of people think about what to do, but you have in one way, you have the technolo technological progress. And the other way, you have human greed, human normal, human aspirations, and they are not in tandem. Uh -huh. Just think about, for example, robots. Mm -hmm. Robots are going to, fine, it's great mm -hmm. to have a robot, it's very interesting, uh -huh. but they're going to give, take away jobs yeah, obviously, from people. Uh, obviously, we get uh, confused with the pollution and the modern science. But it's all, all interconnected. It's inter it is interconnected. And that's the problem. I still believe that we are human race. There must be something that we can do. I am skeptical, right. and um, I, am, well, yeah, I don't hope, know what the I'm future hopeful, will bring. I'm hopeful. I'm, uh, I'm op optimistic that there is uh, always a day when human race can find a way to survive. All right. All right. Anyway, my dear friend, uh, uh, today we're talking about pollution. The more we talk, the less we find we're encouraged. Well, anyway. I want to go the contrary. See, there is a hope.
there is still hope and uh, we can do something better than what we do to save ourselves. Uh, to my good friend Chris Neby, founder and fighter for justice, founder for uh, Monorex Corporation Hollywood, and uh, I would like to say thank you very much for bringing the fact on the table for discussion. And you and I, we agree on both, on everything, except the ending. I really want to see some hopes. I am very happy that you are giving hope to your audience. Uh, yeah, sure, of course. And I appreciate mm -hmm. that uh, you do that. Very and good. I say, Shishini, right. okay. All right, my dear friends. Zai Jian. Mm,